Bibles this evening to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. As we continue to look at who we are or should be. And tonight we're looking at something that should sound very familiar to us because of our campaign, our We Care campaign. We should be people that really care. People who care. Listen to what God is saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 beginning in verse 25. Now, he said a lot of things before this. He's, he's talked all about the body, uh, the body of Christ. Uh, he's, he's talked about the different members of the body and how we relate to each other and how that even though we are all part of the same body, we're not all the same member. And we're, we're all different uh, in, in some ways. But we all need each other. And, and then he begins this passage in, in verse 25 by saying, so. So, and that, that's another way of saying therefore. He said, so. He said all, all that he said up to this point for this verse. This verse. So how, how does putting 1 Corinthians chapter 12 into practice affect us? And this is what he said in verse 25. So that there may be no divisions in the body. Wow. That there be no divisions in the body. Remember that as we keep reading. But that the members have the same care one for another. And if any one, mem if any one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. He begins this by saying, So, everything, everything we've been talking about has led up to this point. Now, it's good to know all of those things. He said, all, all that has been said has led up to this point, and, and the point is that there be no divisions in the body. Man, that's very important in this body, isn't it? In, in my, my flesh and blood. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want there to be problems between... And I've shared with you what, what the allergist told me. Back, back in June, and, and it really hasn't changed things that are going on in my body. For, for years, I've, I've felt like I had allergies. And they said, oh, you do have a few, the cats and dogs and dust and birch trees. But really, the, the problem is your autoimmune system. And your, your soldiers in your body, is the way he explained it, I thought it was pretty cool. He said, your, your soldiers in your body you know, your autoimmune system, said instead of fighting the terrorists in Iraq, they're fighting the Canadians, and they're our friends. And I said, okay, so how do, how do, what do we do? How, how do we, you know, do we put GPS signals on, on all of the good guys so that they, they'll learn not, you know, for friendly fire not to take them out? And I said, so what's the effect of that going to be? So I, I don't have to carry my EpiPen anymore. I said, this sounds good. And he said, no, you still have to carry it. Ends up having the same effect as having allergies. Because, you know, my, and, and so the signals in my body are, are, are saying, oh no, oh no, pepper, even though it tastes good, is not good for you. And, and so, and even though pepper may be a friend, and, and so they're shooting at pepper. And, and so my body still reacts, and there's still divisions in this physical body. And it just gives me fits. And God is saying, that, that doesn't need to happen in the body of Christ. So that there be no divisions in the body. And then he goes back and he sums up everything he's already said in chapter 12 before that by saying this, what we've just read. But God is, is so composed of the body, uh, no, that's verse 24, verse 25, that there should be no divisions in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. That sums up everything he's already said in the first part. In the first part of chapter 12, when he's talking about the body and the differences in the body and everything. So that, that all the members of the body have the same care for one another. The same care for one another. Real care. Real care. Not, 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 a, not an imagined care, not, not an expected care, but real care. And, and you can feel that. There's no difference in what he's saying here and what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12 
when, when he gives us what we have come to call the golden rule. And, and in essence, a golden rule is treat other people the way that you want to be treated. And it would be enough if Jesus just said that. But he didn't just say that. He adds to it. That's just part of verse 12. The, the, the last part of verse 12 is that this fulfills, or this is the essence of all of the law and the prophets. That's big. That's big. He said, you, you, do you want to know, do you want, and it, do you want cliff notes? Do you, do you, do you want, do you want the, the, the spot idea of, of, of what God is saying in, in all of the Old Testament? You, you, know, you want to know how, how God would sum that up? Jesus says that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Now, whenever he talks about loving one another, he, he goes on to say, as you love yourself. Why? Because we all love ourselves. Whenever he says treat each other the way that you would want to be treated, we, we all can tell you how that should look and how it should feel because we all know how we want to be treated. We, we, know, we know what sounds comforting. We know what sounds threatening. We, we know what encourages. We know what discourages. We know what, what, what draws us closer to people. We know what causes offense. We already know that from our own experience in your own life. You could write it all down. And, and, but we don't have to because God did. This, this is real care. This, this is care to the point of being distracted by it. You are consumed with this. And this is a good way to be consumed. Not, not distracted in, in failing to do the good things, but this is being distracted from everything else in this world to where you learn and practice showing the same care to each other. And this is what happened whenever Jesus went, went to the, the tomb or the grave of, of, of Lazarus. We mentioned that this morning. And, and as he walks up, walks up to it, everybody there understood the relationship between Jesus and Lazarus. Whatever they might have heard before, what, whatever the, uh, the, the rumor mill was, was, was doing in, 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 uh, from Bethany to, to Jerusalem, they understood whenever Jesus stood at the grave of Lazarus and he cried. And he cried. And he cried. Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. John 11, verse 35, Jesus wept. And, and what was the reaction of the people? They said, do you see how much he loved him? Do you see how much Jesus loved Lazarus? You, you can see it. And God is telling us in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Jesus is telling us in, in Matthew chapter 7, that this is the essence of what God has been saying from the very beginning. He said, this, this satisfies the law and the prophets. This is all of the law and the prophets. So this ought to get our attention. Care, even to the point of, of distraction. We're, we're always thinking about how, how, can, how can this draw me closer? How can this make people feel more comfortable? And we're not talking about the things that are wrong. We're talking about all the things that are good. That's why God tells us husbands, We'll talk more about that in the marriage class. He tells the husbands, love your wives. How? Visual aid. A visual aid. As Christ also loved the church. There, there, there it is. When, whenever he talks about us, he said no, no one has, has ever really hated himself, but what he'll do is he'll nourish and he'll cherish himself. And he says, so, so guys, you know that about yourself. And your wife knows it about you. She knows what you like. She knows what you like. I mean, your, your wife knows that. They're, they're, they're more perceptive than we are. He said, so show that same care. The things that, that you like, show that same care. And I guarantee you'll have a healthier marriage. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Care to the point of distraction. That's what we're talking about now. Care to the point of distraction. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The Apostle Paul is, is talking about all of the all of the, the difficulties he's gone through. All of the horrendous things. Any one of these experiences would, uh, would, would get top billing in, 
in, in, uh, in our time today of, of what someone has been through. He talks about the times that he was shipwrecked. He, he talks about uh, spending a, a night and a day out, out in, the, in, in the ocean or in the Mediterranean Sea, just, just drifting in, in the storm that was there. He talks about being in, in perils. You know, his, his life was in jeopardy. He talks about being in perils among, among the, the heathen, the ungodly people. He talks about being in perils among, uh, among his, his enemies. He talks about being in perils among his own countrymen. I mean, his own kinsmen. He talks about being in perils with wild animals. He was put in the arena. He, he was put in the arena. He, he, God protected him. He didn't die from it. But, but he talks about, he's not talking about just walking through the, the back country of Alaska and, and not knowing what might step out. He, he says, he tells us how many times he was beaten. Forty stripes save one. He, he tells us about being, uh, being abused and, and, and being hungry and, and, and being w- without clothing and all, all these terrible things. Any one of them, he could have sold the story. You know, they, uh, all of them together, they'd have made a movie about him. I mean, this is better than Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones never went through anything like this. But then listen to what he says. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. He said, apart from such external things. He said, now all those were, were on the outside. But he said, let me tell you what, what was going on on the inside of me. Well, man, we would write a book about, I was scared to death. Or I didn't know if I was going to live. Or there were times a wave came over me and, and I, you know, I, I thought I was going to drown. You know, we'd talk about all those kind of fears, but what does he talk about? To the point of distraction. He said, besides all of this, there is a daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. He said, I'm not going to be distracted by, by, the, by the beatings. I'm not going to be distracted by the... By my, by my life being threatened. He said, what really consumes me is my daily care, concern. Same word. For the churches. Wow. You know what we call that care? Listen to what Jesus says about it. Here's, here's what, what he calls that care. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your anxiety on him. Actually, it's the same word as care. But, but sometimes translators don't want to use the same word over and over again, so they'll, they'll take a, another meaning of that same word. It says, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He said, I'll take it all. I'll take it all. This is called, Jesus, I call this Jesus care. Jesus care. That's, that's what Paul had. When he said, besides all of these other things, all these external things that were going on, he said, the, the, the biggest weight was, was my care for concern for the churches. This is, this is Jesus' care. Does, does Jesus care? Oh, I, I know he does. I know he does. But, I mean, does, Je- does Jesus care how much money I have? Does Jesus care whether I'm at the top of my company or, or whether I'm stuck at mid-level or, or whether I'm, I'm, I spend all my life down here at entry level. Does he care what kind of house we live in? You know, he doesn't even say anything. Oh, he, does, he talks a little bit about it, but not in the same way. He doesn't talk about houses. He talks about having food and raiment. We should learn to be content. We spend a lot of time talking about houses. Jesus care. Jesus care. Who are we? Or should be? Who we should be? We should be people that care. You know, the truth is, I believe you do. I believe you do. Could you do better? You, of course we could. Of course we could. We, we've learned so much about each other already just this year. We've been stretched, we've been pushed, we've, we've, there have been times whenever we've been so tired that you, 
being here for breakfast for, for the, the weekend. Now, some of you would have been here for breakfast if they would just said we're having breakfast and nothing else. Everybody said, oh, well, let's, let's go. But you should have seen some of, uh, not, not just their workers, not just, just the, uh, the, the 48 people that came in. We matched them person for person. I mean, and they, they were planning on 50 people being here and, 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 and helping us with the campaign, and, and, and we had 50 of our own members that helped. Now, not everybody went out. Some of them were here helping in the kitchen and doing other things. And, and, uh, but but there, there were a total of 50 of our own members that, that were helped. We matched them person for person. You know, I really didn't expect that. I'm, I'm a very optimistic person. I'm, I'm not very pessimistic at all. But I, I really didn't expect that. If we'd have had 25 from our congregation, I would have said, way to go. You know, that's good. We had 50. And people got tired. I mean, the lights in the auditorium were off the whole week except at night during, during the, the worship time together because people would come in here at lunchtime, right before lunch, they'd get back from knocking doors and, and everything else that was going on, and, and they'd come in here and lay down on the bench and, and take a nap. The, the kitchen people didn't have an opportunity to do that because as soon as they finished breakfast, they had to start getting ready for lunch. And, and it's, it's amazing at, at their stamina. I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at, at Tony and I'm saying, how are you making it? And she said, oh, I'm making it. I will make it. And, and, and they did. Every, everybody did. But gen, genuine care. G, Jesus care. Philippians chapter 2. Coming back to Jesus care. Listen, listen to what Philippians chapter 2 says. Beginning in verse 1. He says, If there is any encouragement in Christ, all of this is in Christ. If there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion... Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not mere, uh, merely look on, on your own personal interests, but also on the interests of others. Have this attitude in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And normally we begin in verse 5 and go onward. We're going to stop at verse 5. And, and, and listen to what he said. He said, same mind, same love, same spirit, same purpose. Same, 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 same. And that's, that's where God was in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That we would have the same care for one another. But, but here he, 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 he breaks it up and and he says, have the same mind, the same love, the same spirit, the same purpose. Most, most of our attention needs to go to this. Jesus never says neglect the smaller things. The Jews in his day, Jesus, Jesus condemned them scathingly in, in Matthew chapter 23. He says, you, you, you tithe, you're very careful about all your tithing, and, and even to the point of, of, of the mint that are, are the spices that you grow in. And you count the leaf, and every tenth leaf goes, you know, of the mint and the anise and the coming and coming, and, and, and you, you tithe of, of those. And he said, now that's a good thing. He said, but you, you leave the, the important things undone of, of, lurse, of, of love and of, of, of mercy and, and of good sound judgment. He said, you, you, you don't get around to those. He said, these you should have done. You know, the, the important things you should have done. And, but then he explains not to leave the other things undone. He's not saying, okay, let's stop and, and, and totally rework everything. You know, let's tear everything back down to the foundation. He said, no, you, you keep doing the, the things that you're doing, but, but put most of your attention on the more important things. And the more important things in, in our relationship as a body of Christ is having the same care one for another. He says, this was the mind of Christ. He said, this was the mind of Christ. This is Jesus' care. I can't say that strongly enough. This is Jesus' care. That's, that's what he means whenever he says, cast all your care upon me because I care for you. But then he turns around and, and God will say, have that same attitude with each other. Jesus' care. That's, that's important. That's, that's so important. The bracelet. WWJD. 
You know, you know what that, help me out, man. What, what was that? What would Jesus do? You know, they, they, they never made a bracelet, and if they had it, it wouldn't have sold. Well, I would have bought a bunch just to make it look like they were selling. But they never put WWMD. They didn't say, what would Mike do? What would Mike do? Because I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sinful man. There are times when I'm very inconsistent. Even though consistency rakes up there in my, in my life and in my understanding, it, it rakes up, up there at the top with God because God is so consistent there's never any difference in God. God doesn't even have a shadow. He's so consistently the same, you can't even say, well, there's a shadow of difference in God today. No. God, God is so much the same. Jesus the same way. Yesterday, today, forever. That, that, that's who they are. And, but, but me, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not there. I want to be there. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't have sold into those bracelets if you'd, have, if you'd have put WWMD. Or if you'd have put your name there. It, it, it wouldn't have worked. It should have. It should have. I would love for that to be the case. But what we're talking about tonight is, is Jesus' care. The same care he showed, we should be showing. And we should be showing it to each other. Regardless. Regardless of who somebody is, or what they're doing, or whether they're more like us or less like us. The same care. Who we are is we're people who care. We really care. And if you're struggling with that one tonight, there's no better place than, than in, in the middle of a family who cares to say, I need help. I need help. So whatever you may need tonight, come right now while we stand and sing. And the